Hey guys, it's Taylor Weeks. I just want to take a moment before this episode starts and ask you to like, share, and subscribe this podcast and share it with a buddy. Um, I want to take a moment to introduce this episode. If you watched the last episode, you know that we interviewed Dustin King and Noah Studstill from Hard Earned. They shared a lot of great tactics and tips that they use while public land hunting, and we really tried to pick their brain and go in depth on that. So I hope you got something out of it. I hope you liked it. Uh, we were able to sit down with Dustin King before that interview, and he shared a story with us about his personal best buck that he has to date. Um, I forget what he said it scored. It's in the video, though, I believe in the 140s. Um, he killed it back in 2009, I believe he said. So I hope you enjoyed this next episode. Uh, be sure to go check out Hard Earn, their YouTube page, and give them some support, too. And uh, without further ado, hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, well, we are back here. Uh, this time we have a special guest with us, Mr. Dustin King from Hard Earned. Um, later on, his buddy Noah Studstall is going to come join us and uh, jump in on the episode. But for right now, Dustin's going to tell us about his biggest deer to date. Is that right? Yep. Um, you're going to share the story about it, and uh, we'll throw some pictures and videos up as well. Before we get started, though, uh, I want to go ahead and ask everybody to subscribe like it, share it. Main thing is share it with a buddy. Share the podcast with a buddy. And uh, if you like <coughs> something that you hear or see, let us know so we know what kind of content to keep bringing. Yeah. And uh, so, Dustin, uh, does this deer have a name? No. I did not have any <laughs> pictures of this deer. I really? just seen sign of him, like, in that area. Now, this is back in 2009 mm -hmm. when cameras weren't as popular or you had to print them off at the pharmacy, right. you know? Yeah. So, 2009... So that's back before all these gadgets and everything come out where it sends it to your cell phone. You know the deer's in the area somewhere. This is no like, this is raw. Yeah. This is raw hunting. This is OG hunting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's outstanding. We, uh, you know, my dad, and I'm sure like, you know, several dads around the, the area probably respect that kind of hunting, you know, and, and I do like... Uh, don't get me wrong, I like the kind of hunting that we can do these days where we can scout, we can find deer, they send it to our cell phones. Uh, it, it it helps out tremendously. Uh, but when you kill a deer like you did in 2009, that's, uh, that's a different, you know, that's a different ball game. That's what they had to do back in the day, you know. You just, you go pull the card out of your camera, or either you didn't run cameras and you, you went by just strictly sign of the deer. Yeah. Um, in which I know you do a little bit of public land hunting, which we'll get into at some point, um, <clears throat> which on public land, in my opinion, uh, you don't really, you know, y you go in kind of blind. Yeah. I mean, it's not your property. You don't know a whole lot about it uh, other than what you may pull up on your phone or whatever, you know, just looking at aerial maps and stuff like that. Um, so we'll get into that later on. But so the deer didn't have a name. No. Uh, so what's the story behind him? So at this time, uh, I'll say it was about seven miles from here, but I had a, a thousand acres of a uh, private property that I was able to hunt. Mm -hmm. And uh, this this land, I, I treated it, uh, the deer, better than most folks probably treat their dogs. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I would uh, eat crackers to save money to feed deer, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mineral sites, everything, man. Like right. it, it was, I've, I've been like that for a long time. Well, uh. I, I got to noticing some sign of like a uh, a bigger bigger deer rubs mm. and uh, some tracks, and uh, I was like, man, there might be something to this. So uh, I've always been a full moon week guy, also, and uh, kind of funny. I was going to LBW at the time, and we were uh, working in Dixie on mm. my time off building a house. Well, it rained four days in a row down there, but mm. not up here. Yeah. So they knocked us off at lunch. Well, yeah. that was a full moon week. Well, I'd leave from down there and drive right over here and get in the stand. Mm -hmm. So the fourth day of me bouncing around in this swamp that has a river running through it, mm -hmm. uh, I was just kind of following his rub lines and scrape lines, you know. Uh, I'll be dang, I climb up, and probably 30 minutes later at 1.15 in the afternoon, there he is. Really? Yep. Man, uh, <clears throat> so that, I got a question for you. Um, what time of the year was this? December 12th. December, so it wasn't January yet. No. It wasn't what we call... The rut. No, it was the, the what everybody calls the December lull around here. I got you. Yeah, I was about to say the December lull. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that's crazy, man. Uh, so you was hunting 
he was already scraping? Yeah. Okay. And he was hunting a scrape line kind of? Scrape, or scrape rubs. slash rub line. Okay, yeah. Um, so what kind of, I mean, <laughs> we'll get into some more detail later on, but what, uh, I mean, were you hunting food plot, timber? Swamp bottom. Just swamp. No no feed. Just now, I've seen swamp. some of your videos and stuff, too, uh, where you've hunted a little bit on public land in swamps. Yeah. And had luck. Oh, yeah. Uh, hunting swamps. Uh, and, and I kind of, I like to hunt swampy areas myself. Uh, if I find a piece of property, uh, that's where I like to get is in the nastiest, swampiest looking stuff, uh, which most of the time, in my opinion, that's where you find your mature buck sign and, uh, where they want to hang out, you know, um, which apparently that's what you did in this situation, um, which you knew this property, I'm assuming pretty well because, you know, it was private land and, and you were hunting a thousand acres, you said. Uh, was there anybody else hunting this property with you? A buddy of mine at the time. And <clears> I, I will say this, uh, the 1,000 acres was not continuous. It was split up, and this chunk was a 327. Right. And okay. uh, with about 200 huntable. Yeah. Was there so, water nearby that you were hunting? Oh, yeah. The uh, Yellow River runs right through it. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's always, uh, that's I want always to, good. <laughs> if I can go ahead, I want to pick your brain on the, the full moon right. phase. So you're a moon guy. Yep. How did you, how did you come to realize for you that that was a a good time to be in the woods? Is that something that you read up on, studied, or is it just something that you had learned through personal yeah. experience? Heard about and then trial and error proved. Yeah. So okay. not, not a lot of people want to go sit out there from eleven to three in the middle of the day, but right. I, I had the time, so yeah. I would do it when I did have the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the it just proved <clears> itself <throat> to me, and I've been on that ever since. Yeah. We uh, does it correlate with underfoot overhead? So I haven't put those two together yet. Gotcha. I, I've not focused on that as much. I think Noah has, but uh, if you look at your major feeding times, I'm not sure if that correlates with the overhead, underfoot, all that jazz. But the major feeding times do generally line up. But that full moon week to me, the day of the full moon, 48 hours prior. Then you got that full moon day, and then 48 hours after. That's your five day window to shoot a mature buck. And why is that? <clears throat> I have no idea, dude. It, they're just on their feet I'm more. The, that's just what they do. During yeah. the day, yeah. they'll be more on their feet. Deer yes, do sir. what the deer do, huh? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and there, um, there's some studies that will tell you that that's not the case, man, but I, I just I don't believe it. I, I've mm-hmm. done seen it. Uh, right. Maybe I'm just in that area. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I can tell somebody to go sit here, uh, in the middle of the day, and they shoot a mature buck too. Mm-hmm. That's saying something, you right? Know? So that brings me to my next question. So you're not just hunting; <clears throat> you probably do hunt daylight and you know morning and afternoon. But you you also sit in the full uh, during a full moon stage uh, during the middle of the day. Oh yeah, you see a lot of movement during the middle of the day. Oh yeah. Now, <clears throat> I have noticed that. Just by running trail, yeah, I I can't say for myself. I'm not a I'm not a go when the time's right. I'm a go whenever I can go. You right. know what I mean? Which is the best thing to do, in my opinion. If you can go, if you're a weekend warrior, go when you can go. That's right. Uh, you're not going to kill them sitting on the couch. But if you can play it like you're playing it, yeah. by all means, uh, I say get out there and do it. Um, but <clears throat> in in my I guess you can say watching cameras and, and what's going on when that I saw you post, uh, about the full moon that, uh, happened. I believe it was the first of January, uh, or it may have been, yeah, the first of January. Um, I did see a lot of movement during the middle of the day from about nine thirty to about two o'clock, uh, which a lot of the times is when people were not in the stand. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people, <laughs> I'm guilty a lot of times getting, getting down about nine or nine thirty. Yeah. And going home, doing whatever, and then getting back in the stand about two forty five, three o'clock. Uh and during that time you could be missing mature bucks is, is what I've seen. So uh, where are you hunting at? Like for this deer, for example. I know you said swamp. Um, but to catch that middle of the day movement, are they moving closer to the food sources? Are they are they hanging tight to their bedrooms in that early december time frame i felt like he would be looking for does as the reason he was throwing down sign and uh the the swamp video y'all watched from public land that was december 18th i believe Mm -hmm. and uh if you think about this 
that deer was bumping does. Yeah. Well, that tells me I can go back in there next December, and then does will be right back in that same estuary cycle, right? right? Yeah. So we're not just January like everybody thinks. Yeah. When I seen get, get this sign getting thrown down, I mm-hmm. was like, okay, well, maybe I'm on to something right here. Right. So I just felt like in that doe movement area, general travel corridors is what I really focus on. Now, this is a, a swamp that's probably 150 yards wide for this specific deer, and there was planted pines on one side and just as thick as you can imagine on the other until you get to the dirt road. Mm-hmm. So I, I can only assume he was probably bending that thick, thick, thick. Right. I mean, you you got to crawl through that kind of stuff. Right. The edges uh, seems to be that there's there's something going, around, going on around that transition of just, say, 30-year-old pines versus a select cut that was done uh, within the last 10 years. Right. Which, you know, me and you talked about that one time. Uh, what Dustin's saying is kind of like my thought process has always been is, you know, we walked some property in Elba uh, when I got some permission. Uh, and I think we walked some property that you had permission on. Uh, and I told you at one time that <clears throat> uh, bucks like that transition between hardwoods and a clear cut that's maybe good bedding for them or uh like you said a swampy area uh beside pine trees they they just like that transition uh, in my i guess experience of hunting i've always found that that's a good travel corridor for the deer um right there where it transitions into something different you know and you said that you had evidence that there was a there was a big buck in this area so you started following the rub lines and scrape lines i did and uh some of the trees are smaller than what you you would think you know but mm-hmm. the height and then there would be a bundle of trees and I'd see dig marks way past where mm. the bases were normally rubbed. So here's my question about that. This is something that I wonder a lot of times. When you're following that sign, um, and it was during hunting season. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, when you're following that sign, how do you know when to stop? I generally don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I push it to the limit, man. This year, dude, I, I, all right, uh, jump to the public land this year i had a, a spot i was going into the swamp and i was like look this is where i need to be but i see like the perfect tree 20 yards right man if i had just saddled up it'd yeah. been game over i went <clears throat> 15 feet and jumped him out of his bed really yeah i'm talking about a good one golly yeah so that's it bites me but i find a lot of, more than the average person too, right you know so were you able to go back and hunt that deer i did see that deer the last day of season i was gonna say typically uh, if you bump a deer, I, 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 some people are different, but I don't worry too much about bumping him because he will eventually come back to that oh, yeah. spot. He knows that spot. Um, so I don't worry too much about that, but I mean, I don't want to bump him all the time, you know, and if I can help bumping him, I try not to, Yeah. but if I do, you know, I don't know if you feel the same way sometimes. Uh, I do. And the average person would have thought he was in a Pensacola or Destin, you know, yeah. like the way yeah. he took the out there. The way he gets out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 it don't bother me if I see him. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously a bedding area, we don't have just beds where, where we're right. at here in the South, mm. but I know that's general bedding area. And like I said, I, I kick myself in the butt for that sometimes, but yeah. at least I find out some stuff as I go along. Doing oh yeah, it. absolutely. Um, do you ever do y'all ever do any kind of shed hunting or anything like that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, you have luck? I've never oh, gotten yeah. into it. I've never gotten into it, but I'd love to. Yeah. Uh, now I know I've fa- I have found sheds out turkey hunting in the spring or uh, especially late turkey season. Um, but I, I've never gotten into it. Uh, I've wanted I'd to, like but to. I've always been told that it's hard to find them here in the south. It's very hard. <clears throat> so I walked right by one uh, two two years ago, and uh, that ended up being the grade eight shed that he killed the following year. Really? Oh wow. Yeah. See that's, that's cool. Yeah, that. that so do you have a dog be, that helps you with it, or you just just do we it? We just we just. just I, nice. I'm I'm always looking, man. Like I'm just so <coughs> observant, you know. Right. Uh, if you're gonna hunt like a, a deer or hunt in an area, mm-hmm. uh, it takes pieces of a puzzle to put the puzzle together. Right. And that's what I'm always looking for. Yeah. So, how long does it take you to piece together those puzzles? Well, that deer that he mentioned earlier, uh, prior to us recording, I found that one pretty quick. It, it depends on the land. Mm. Um, I generally can e-scout and, and be in the area I want to be, and then I'll branch out after that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Takes a lot of time <laughs> to do that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Now, e-scouting uh, to find the multiple bucks that I have found this past year, mm. I, I can't wait for Noah to get here because a lot of people <laughs> have no idea. <laughs> uh, the the e-scouting is a lot, and the 30-plus miles I had on my boots before deer season come in yeah. was a lot. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, I want to 
uh, preface all that by mentioning during our little break that uh, I've set my lifestyle up to where I'm off 21 to 28 days at the time with my job. Also, this is right. not a Monday through Friday person. Right, right. So uh, when I first started in the line of work that I do, I came home and I hunted more than most folks was working and i was yeah, like this right. is for me <laughs> that's right that's right and so you get to hunt more probably within that month or that three to three weeks that you're off more than a lot of people may even get to hunt in a season you yes know? yes and um, uh and, and, and you know a lot of folks they want to well maybe he's I hope no one thinks that you would be neglecting, you know, right. duties. Yeah. However, my, my wife goes to work, my kids go to daycare, right. or go to pre-K, so then I go and do what I want to do. That's you know right. I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. See, and I, I have to build up brownie points. <laughs> yeah. that's I why they go to nashville to the nwtf yeah hey i, I was that close to going yep, yep i said turkey season right around the corner i, I say that my wife's pretty good though like she is very right. supportive of me going and yeah. doing that because she knows i enjoy doing it yeah but you know it's it's for me it's about finding that balance balancing oh, yeah. that family time and the right the hunting time and now that i have a newborn i have really got to experience the whole balance act are y'all uh, sleeping through the night yet yeah, well, <laughs> to yes, uh, she does extremely well. Now, our next one may be bouncing off the walls, but this one, she goes to bed probably next around. One. Huh? Is there a next one? No, no, not right now. <laughs> we're talking in a year or two, I thought maybe. We we're making a good maybe. announcement here. No, no. <laughs> this would be a first but, uh, first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Man, no, my wife would, I wouldn't be here if we were pregnant again. Yeah. I promise you that. But uh, <laughs> I may not ever be able to hunt again. But uh, but yeah, uh, she sleeps through the night. She does pretty good. But yeah, I'm getting to that point where I have to balance it out. Yeah. Now I do have a job, kind of like uh, kind of like Dustin. Uh, I don't get to hunt morning and night, but I do get to hunt. I'm on an odd work week schedule, and I get to hunt Thursdays and Fridays. Um, which my wife does the same thing yours does. Goes to work, or either she's home with the kid all day. Um, so I, I get to take that time to, to go morning and afternoon on Thursdays and Fridays. And then, um, I turn right back around, I get off every day at two o'clock. So I can at least get in the deer stand usually by at least three or three thirty. Uh, it gets kind of weary when, when the, the days start getting short. Oh yeah. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> it does allow me to get out there. Uh, See, I'm so a teacher I, and you would think that I would get a lot of time to get in the woods in the afternoons, mm-hmm. but after I get done with my bus route, it's. It, it, too late. I, it's too late to get into the woods without yeah. spooking something. Yeah. But unless it's early season and time has not changed. Right. right. And maybe yeah. one day we can do away with that time change. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Stay <laughs> on daylight savings time. <laughs> That's That'd right. Be nice. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, Kicker, you know, my, my the very first podcast we did on Kicker, I got in the stand uh, about 4 o'clock that afternoon, which when daylight changes, uh, when daylight time changed, there's no way you could get in at 4 o'clock. Uh, you could, but you would run the risk of running them out of a field or running them out of wherever you're at, you know. So, uh, But, yeah, that helps out tremendously during bow season. So I have a question. Pick your brain a little bit. Um, the wind. <clears throat> Do you hunt the wind really hard? Are you really uh, particular about that? Or I what, what you, you are? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I say you got a uh, – Thermals too? <sighs> Yes and no on the thermals. You know, say you got a 200-yard area. I want to know what's going on in that 200 yards. If this is bedding, I'll try to have two access points for wind because I really want to hunt there for some reason. I've done found something. You know what I mean? So you want to have two access points on the wind uh, if, if that's, you know, say you got minimal spots, right? But I try to have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah. And then I know I can go here without – having problems on the wind mm, right but when you break down that 200 yard area there's some places just say 200 yards it could be five six whatever we're just using that as reference that you don't want to go uh-huh. because if you go through there well he could be bedded right there you mm-hmm. know and and it could be as simple as you walking through there not getting touched by anything right it don't matter mm-hmm. if it's thigh high sage <laughs> them deer will bed in that kind of stuff if yeah. it's to their advantage yep uh and a lot of your mature bucks will, a lot of the times if they do bed down, they'll bed down to wherever they think is safest, and they'll have the wind. Usually, in my in my experience, usually that buck somehow, I don't know how he knows, but like an access road or something, he may know that that access road is there, 
and he'll bed down downwind from that access road if that's where he thinks the most traffic traffic comes from. Oh yeah. Uh, so a lot of the times that that kind of stuff will, will can hurt you before you ever even get set up or get in the stand. Oh, I yeah. know that probably sounded like a stupid question, but the reason I ask is this: <clears throat> I always paid attention to the wind and tried to be really really uh, particular about it. And I don't know. It seemed like sometimes I would have luck, sometimes I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was one area this year that I was hunting where there was thick stuff into, in three different directions of my stand. And uh, so I felt like they could be bedding in any of those directions. And I would always get nervous because the wind was going to be blowing to one of them. And one of the podcasts that I listened to, there was a guy that was a guest on it, and he said that he did not even pay attention to the wind because it might keep him from going hunting. And he said, I may throw some milkweed once I get there, see what it's doing. He said, but, you know, weekend mm-hmm. warrior type, type yeah. deal, like we yeah. said. And uh, I tried it, and I had luck. And I, mm-hmm. I mean, like flatbread. Mm-hmm. The wind, uh, this wasn't planned this time, but he walked behind me mm-hmm. before he came out and let me get a shot at him. And that's why I was wondering. I was wondering if there was anybody else that was like that. <clears> well, you know, the only one. The kicker, the deer that I killed earlier this year, I don't know if, if you heard that podcast, Dustin, but I had six different deer blow me out of that stand. Now, that's the wind died down right before the sunset and everything got good and he come out and I killed him that day. But, uh, but I, I, you know, I, I do try to play the wind best I can when I can. Yeah. Uh, I try to get in the woods as much as possible, too, just because, like we talked about earlier, you can't kill them sitting on the couch. Um, but I do think it's good to – I can't say that I wasn't upset or disappointed when <laughs> when them deer blew me out, you know, because the first thing that runs through my mind is – it's over with. You know what I mean? I've got six deer that just blew me out and a mature buck's not going to come out here. If I can't, if I can't, <clears throat> if I can't trick them or outsmart them, how am I going to outsmart him? Mm-hmm. Now it did happen for me, but I'm not saying that that's something that happens all the time. More than none, it happens, you know, usually that don't happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of luck in that day, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, not saying that you, you can't have them blow at you, but there's a lot of luck when that happens. There's a lot of luck if he does come by that day. You know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, I can tell you I've watched enough deer. Like uh, I seen a pine limb break one day, and it hit the ground, and the doe started blowing at it. Yeah. Like they, they blow all the time, right. you know. Right, um, that They was blowing trying to get that buck off of them mm-hmm. from the public this year. Mm-hmm. So the blowing don't really concern me as much as the ones that are deep and then send chills down your spines when he's 40 yards and you that know you right. just messed up. Yeah. Or he, he caught your, your <clears throat> scent, you know. Right. Yeah, because I I guess it's almost if you go to a spot that is you can play the wind all you want to um, to a certain extent, but you're not always like you said. uh, I used to worry about blowing a lot more than I do now. I used to be like, man, I'm getting down. I'm not doing this. I'm not going to waste my time. I got better things to do. I'm going to Hardee's. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go get me a biscuit, man. The heck with this. But I have, like you said. they blow at bobcats, they blow at that coyotes, they blow at everything. Cars going by on the highway, they'll blow. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, so, you, you know, you. a lot of times uh, they don't so – I, I guess you could say sometimes it don't bite. Because I've seen – I have seen a buck be standing in a field uh, or in the hardwoods, and I've seen – I've had does blow off in the distance, and he ain't paid them a, a lick of attention. Uh, so I guess that can come into play too. Is I guess it's when you blow that one out that you're hunting. Yeah. That's the problem. And that's what all hunters don't want to do. They don't want to go in. They want to play the wind because they want to have the best chance possible to kill that mature buck. Um, go ahead. What was you saying? It, no, what you said reminded me this <clears throat> past season in that same spot, uh, actually. I was in the tree stand, and I see movement, and there's a, a young doe coming out, a, a yearling, I guess. And um, I'm as still as can be. And I hear blowing mm-hmm. behind her that, you know, the big doe behind her was blowing. I'm like, what is she blowing at? Because the wind was going behind me. I knew it wasn't the wind that she was catching. Um, I had good cover. It's early season. We still have leaves on, uh, you know, the trees. And I had good cover. I was still, I'm thinking, she cannot be blowing at me. Mm-hmm. And I still don't know this for sure. But I wonder if, like, me going into that area had them on edge just a little bit. And she was just blowing just to, just to see if she could spook something wasn't right. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and see if they get something to move. Because or... once that little doe came, came on out, she came out with her, and everything was fine. They were as calm as they could be. Mm-hmm. And bucks came out of like just a few minutes behind them too, actually. Mm-hmm. But anyway. isn't that weird how that works? You always get the decoy. <laughs> it's like when you crow hunt. You know, they send that messenger. The, the, the <laughs> there's a few deer that come out, and then the bucks will come out after. Right. Yep. yep. Absolutely. So you know, back to your deer. Um, what did you shoot him with a rifle or a bow yeah. or a rifle this time? Yeah, I was not bow hunting at this time. Uh, yeah. After I killed him, I killed a, a eight point that was a uh, eighteen inches wide, probably about one twenty. Mm-hmm. This was December twelfth. That uh, eight point was mid January, right around the same time frame. Another full moon week. Yeah. And then I started bow hunting the next year because I wanted to try and achieve that high again. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, let's let's uh, <clears throat> show it to the camera. Let's look at it. Man, that's a nice looking rat. Yeah, he's a stud. I'm just yeah. now noticing that little kicker there off the main beam. Yeah, he was uh, 15 and three quarters wide, but still grossed 145 and a half. And I, I ain't scored him since the drying period, so probably 141 if I had to guess. Right, and he, uh, and, and he's an 11 point if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Um, yeah, and that that drives that score on up, uh, absolutely. And uh, I guess <clears throat> with the kicker there, that makes him non typical. Yeah, so you yeah. would actually deduct it. That's okay. why I just go gross on this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 For uh, sure. That's a stud deer, man. That's that's outstanding. He's got great main beams, man. They come around. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you know how long the main beams were? I want to say 22. 22. That's outstanding. And you can see some of the – it's neat to me when you always see the rubbing and you know that you've seen the trees he was hitting. That's right. There, there's just that neat correlation there, yeah. you know? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I always tell the taxidermist, leave that in there. Oh, I don't yeah. want that cleaned off because yeah. my taxidermist that I use, he does say, do you want them cleaned off? I say, absolutely not. Uh, I want to I wanna relive that any every chance I get. Um, yeah, and we talked about <clears> – can <throat> y'all hear me good? Yeah. yeah. We talked about uh, us living in South Alabama, and we're talking about like 30 minutes, maybe 30 minutes from the Florida line. Oh, yeah. So – you know, our deer don't get, you know, we talk a lot about, uh, and you're probably familiar with them, but like the Seek One boys and, and several different people, you know, that, that hunt out west and, and all that stuff. We don't have the luxury to hunt, in my opinion. Uh, now, there are some studs out there, uh, but few and far between. Absolutely. Um, that run 160s to 170s and 200s. I don't know if there's even one. If it if they if somebody kills a 200 around here, it probably got out of a pen somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. But that deer is as good as in my opinion, that's as good as you can get around here. Uh, that's a shooter in anybody's book where we're from. Yeah. Uh, in South Alabama. Back then that one made the paper. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it it would have made the front lines. Uh but, yeah, so you killed that one with a rifle uh, and then got into bow hunting after you killed that one with a rifle. Uh, I guess doing the same thing a lot of us do is looking for that next high yeah. uh, to, try, to try to get that, that, that exciting feeling back. i tell you what um, I would have done. If I had killed that thing, I would have – well, first off, I would have just sat down beside it and been like, what did I just do? <laughs> well, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me get to that. So, so I did – I pulled the trigger, and he ran off like nothing happened. I mean, yeah. tail oh, no. up. Oh really? Yeah. So he wasn't buckled down like, no. yeah, like, like I could see maybe ten yards of him running. I was like, yeah. did I miss? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I was like, oh man, I'm about to puke. You know, that's all <laughs> yeah. I could think. Well, I called my dad and I was like, Daddy, I just shot the biggest deer I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, he was like, Come on now. And I was like, I'm for real. He <laughs> yeah. worked at uh, Massey Automotive at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, Well, look, don't climb down because I don't want you to fall. Yeah. So he knows how well, how it was. You know. Oh yeah. Anyway, I climbed down uh, 20 minutes later after yeah. I quit shaking his bad, and I get to walk, and, and there was blood about right where I last seen him at. And I was right. like, okay, we got a hit. So I get to trail, and he went about 75 yards, and this was a double lung shot. So like you're talking about, I, I, when I found him, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I knew that was something special. Absolutely. Because I grew up dog hunting, and I've seen a lot of deer get killed. You right. Know? And I was like, man, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. And uh, it took you an hour and a half to get him out of there. Yeah. And at that point, uh, I called him whenever I got service again, because at that time there was none where, where this was at. And uh, I said, I got him. And yeah. uh, he said, well, bring him to work. And uh, I could hear people in the background, what if he's got a little old six point? Well, I heard him <laughs> talking junk. Y'all don't know my boy, you know? <laughs> so I roll up there yeah. and, and folks lost their mind like I did when I first found him, yeah. you know? 
And uh, I think it, somebody from Florida newspaper called me at that time. Like, yeah, that was pretty wild. Oh yeah. And then I want to say it was the following year that a 177 was killed. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Really? Yes, sir. 24 inches wide. Lord, I got a picture of it around here. Yes. Really. Red level to my knowledge. Good my gracious. Gosh. That's yeah. a stud. 14 point 24 inches wide. 177 gross. Send me that picture if you can. I will. That's a monster. Yeah. That is a monster you could, around here. You could put a, a climbing stand between his beams. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Good gracious. It's big. <laughs> that is, that's nuts. So how much did he weigh? Uh, we guessed at him at uh, 185, me and Chris Owens, yeah. taxidermist. We, uh, <clears throat> I was about to say, that looked like Chris Owens' work. Yep. Yep. You know Chris Owens? Mm-hmm. He mounted one of my deer last year. We, uh. Oh yeah, man, man that deer actually cost me double. Uh, I was heading there, <laughs> and I was I was doing ten over. I got pulled over by a state trooper. Yeah, oh. and uh, he was like, "Man, what's your hurry?" And I was like, "I'm just a little excited, man. I'm like, I'm two miles from the taxidermist." Right. And uh, he was like, "All right." And uh, I said, "You see what I got in the back?" <laughs> he looked better. He said, "Yeah." And I was like, "I'm getting a ticket." You what? Know? <laughs> so he wrote yeah. me a ticket for speed, dude. Golly, <laughs> it was a good but a bad day. <laughs> I guess he wasn't a hunter. Yeah. Well, we're not going to invite him if yeah. if he is. We're not going to invite him to do nothing with us. Uh, well, I would have sat down and been like, "Oh my gosh, what did I just do?" And I would have drove through town with my tailgate down. Yeah, I absolutely, would absolutely, yeah. man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that deer, did y'all age him? Four and a half. Four and a half. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Uh, and I will stress that there is a uh, farm fields around where the swamp is. So really, he had some good, yeah, good protein, if you will. Right. Sounds right. pretty diverse. Yeah. Swamp, mm-hmm. ag. You said there was water. Oh was yeah. About- Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely and that's everything a good buck wants like that absolutely diversity there, there, it, there's still good bucks there my brother's actually on this club and mm. there's still good deer there now let me ask you this <clears throat> our first podcast with kicker i've been in the deer hunting business for a long time my dad's always deer hunted uh i've, I've been in it for a long time but one thing that we and dad's killed a lot of deer that are really fine deer um but and we've had, back in the day, years ago, uh, we've had some people score some of Dad's deer. Now, is it true that <clears throat> your deer usually don't score as much? Because I, I hear people around town a lot of times, you know, well, I killed this deer, and I killed that deer, and it scored a 150. It scored a 153. It scored a 140. And then I look at the picture of the deer, or I look at the deer, and I'm thinking, man, you know, there's ain't no if, way. <laughs> if I scored that, you know what what they say it scored, there ain't no way, you know, like you said that yeah. that one scored that. You know, is that a true statement or is that just I don't know who's wrong and who's right. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I don't like I said I don't know. A lot of people tend to say, well, it scores one, you know, fifty, and I'm not saying yours in particular. I'm saying. Because that's a fine deer, and I do think that it probably went 140. I'm just saying that a lot of people yeah. say, you know, my deer's 150. Yeah. But I've seen people that say their deer's, like you say, that one's 140. But I've seen deer that's a lot smaller than that, that people are saying, well, it's 140. There, yeah. ain't, there ain't no way. I have and I don't to. ever, I wouldn't ever say that to no, them, no. but I don't know who's wrong in that situation. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they uh, didn't really read the manual on, on mm. scoring because they there's a part in there where they want you to measure outside. Right. And they might add that too outside mm. main beam to main beam. Right. But that's not the case. That don't yeah. go into the scoring aspect of it. Okay. Well, too, so, when you're scoring your own deer, it's very hard to be conservative. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'll say hey, that for me, it is. I'll, yeah. I'll claim it. Yeah, I'll claim it. And and I'll be honest with you, man. I've scored a lot of people's deer, and yeah. I I don't like doing it mm-hmm. because I, I've seen smiles turn into frowns. Yeah, and that's not what it's about. That's it's, that's what we've always come in contact with. Is man, that's a fine deer. Well, then when you score it, it's like. Mm. Yeah, you see the shoulders drop. Like, yep. oh man, I thought it was a lot bigger than mm. that. You and know, and I don't want nobody to feel that way. Like no. you probably don't either. No, it's not worth feeling like that because you just shot a six and a half year old buck. And I'm thinking right. about one story in particular. Right. And I had to convince this guy how hard that is to do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So finally, he got a little bit better, but he was thinking 130, and it was you know 119. Right. Yeah. But it's just hard to get there. It's just like a <clears throat> fish, man. Yes. Everybody yes. thinks that that seven and a half is ten. He ain't. That's right. 
you know. And a lot of the times what you're thinking is usually not the case. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm trying to get to is, you know, what you're thinking that deer is, I usually scale back on mine. Yeah. What, like what the kicker episode, when I said it's 130 inches, I'm thinking 130 inches with that G2. I don't think it'll come close to 130 inches with a G2 broke off. I just don't. Yeah. Uh, I always scale my deer back just because I watched them score my dad's deer at one time, and I was thinking, that's a stud there. You know, they kill them jokers out west, and then it comes back at like a 133 or a 134 or something like that, and I'm like. I just don't understand the, the gross versus the net. In yeah. my mind, if he has 140 inches of antler, just count the 140 inches. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's just me, though. Nobody asked my opinion. But. And the drying period is what goes in the books. 60 days. Okay. And I had no idea they would shrink as much as they did. Yes, sir. Yeah. And me neither, as you know, because you commented on our first video. Yeah. <laughs> and I had no clue. I thought it's got to be centimeters. But you said is sometimes you have seen it up to like four inches yeah. at, you know, in, in some, certain situations. Yeah. So, there he uh, is. Man no of the hour. Oh, no, Noah's going to talk our head off, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. He's fired up, too. Yeah. Long day of work. Hey. Come on in, old son. We're in the middle of it. We're just about to wrap this one up. and Yeah. We're going to start part two. Start the one with both of y'all. Hey, buddy. How are you? Good. How are y'all? Taylor Weeks. Nice to, nice to meet you. <clears throat> Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, y'all want to go ahead and wrap this one up and – yeah, we'll, we can. we'll take a small little yeah. break and then we'll get started on the next one. Sound like a plan, man. All right, we'll catch them later. Yep.